Hi, I'm Bart Hansen. I'm the owner and lead instructor for CrushLivePoker.com. The following hand comes from our call-in show that we record live every Monday. If you enjoy this video, hit that like button. And if you want to submit to be on the show, take a look at the information in the description. I, uh, I've been playing a lot lately in London, and I was playing at a 1-2 game. Um, but uh, if anyone knows the London main casino card rooms, you'll know it plays more like a 2-5 game. Yeah. Um, big stacks, straddling constantly, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And um, this call is not about a specific hand. It's more about a situation. So I'd been playing at the same table for about six hours. Um, I'd quadrupled my buy and I was sort of getting ready to leave. I was gathering my stuff. And then a new guy came and take, uh, took a seat. It had been the same guys for quite some time until this guy came up. Um, so I thought, well, I'll sit back down and play a couple more orbits to see if he's exploitable or, or if it's time to go home. So after two orbits, and, and it, bear in mind, uh, before this guy arrived, we'd been a pretty much unchanged lineup for at least three hours. Okay. Um, after two orbits, the dealer stops the game and refers the deck to the floor manager and he says that the cards have been marked and we have to get a new deck. So no one has complained at this mean, time. No one's complained at this time. The dealer no just stops complained. and says the card's marked yeah. somehow. With this. Okay. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And um, it's been marked in the sense that uh, there's, it, there's some kind of slight bend or, or sort of sliver on the back of the card. Okay. None of us had seen anything. Okay. So, um, so obviously... At this point, I think the conventional logic is just to stand up and leave. But I was uh, I was interested in what was going on, um, so I've sort of stopped playing hands, but I'm still playing the blind um, just so I can stay at the table and see what happens. Okay. So one more happens, and then the dealer stops the game again, and this time he's specifically indicating the two cards that the new player who just sat down has just returned to him, and he says these are marked. Okay. Um, at this point, he calls the floor over. The guy is obviously denying marking the cards. Um, the floor comes over and replaces the deck, and the dealer says to the floor that something needs to be done because the deck has been marked twice. Two decks have been marked. Okay. Um, to this, the floor says that he can change the deck, um, but that there's there's no way that he can... Uh, know who is marking it there's nothing he can do and that we're welcome to leave the game if we want to at this point i chip in and i say well we've all been playing in one lineup for at least three hours this guy has arrived about 20 minutes ago and now there's been two marked decks so did the um, dealer and also of course, when the dealer gone. told the floor guy that the cards are marked did he indicate that he thought that it was this guy that was marking the cards at that moment, he didn't. But then during my interaction, I said, and the second time that the marked cards have been found, they've been coming back from that guy and the dealer confirmed it at that time. Okay. And then what did the floor do? So did he said that? The floor, the flo yeah. So the floor says um, that he will do a new deck, but he won't break the game. He specifically says, I won't break the game and I'm not going to ask anyone to leave unless there's proof. So uh, the game resumes once again, um, and after another orbit, once again, the game is stopped by the dealer due to the marked cards, and at this point, I cash out and go home because it's obviously not feasible to play at this time. For the third time. And what I, yeah, for the third time, third time in half an hour. So let me ask and, you this, let me, let me ask yeah. you this question, Henry. So this is what, and Henry and I talked a little bit because I wanted to know the nature of this. So when you said marked cards, what exactly do you mean by marked cards? How are they marked? It seemed to be that, I, 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 I'm not sure I'm explaining it very well. It seemed to be that he'd run, somebody had run a fingernail down the card so that it reflected the light slightly differently because it was slightly broken, the laminate. Okay, so this is always, I, I always wonder about this because I, and maybe, and listen, like I, I'm the first to admit that sometimes I'm wrong because... Whenever this exact situation comes up, and it comes up occasionally in LA, maybe not not so much recently, I kind of roll my eyes and I'm like, oh, really? The guy's not marking the cards. It's just a fingernail. And what's interesting yeah. about this is that, uh, especially a few World Series ago, they had a huge problem because they were using really, really cheap cards. 
And it was some company that had, I think it was Copac. What was weird is that they had put a bid to basically be the cards for the World Series, right? And traditionally, yeah. as a consumer-grade card, and again, I think it was Copac. It could have been a different, whatever company it was. As a consumer-grade card, the cards that that brand put out that you could buy at the store were really good cards. However, the cards <laughs> that they supplied to the World Series were shitty cards. You couldn't buy those cards at the store. Probably had something to do with the volume of cards that they had to obviously deliver to the World Series. They were flimsy. Mm -hmm. And when you start to look at, you know, these cards are used over and over again, not just in Hold'em, but in mixed games where people are squeezing the cards, you know, stuff like that. There were all kinds yeah. of fingernails. And they were just like, look, every card is marked. This is what the World Series did at, at, at that point. They're like, every single card is marked. It doesn't even matter. And I don't know what I, how I feel. Maybe someone in the live chat could respond. Like, is it possible for someone to fingernail a card where it's to their advantage? And what I mean by that is, is that they would have to be able to detect the card while it's face down in someone else's hand right? That would, or like the burn, yeah. like they were accounting for the fact that the card is in the, whatever it is face down. I don't, Yeah, I've never been overly concerned about that fingernailing the cards. I might be naive. Now, if somebody was like marking mm -hmm. the cards, right? Like with like, like making a mark yeah, like with a oh. marker or something like that, that would be a different story. Did you think that the cards were being manipulated in some way where you could notice them? Um, my answer is sort of two parts. So I would note that it was only Broadway cards that were marked. So it seemed like it was a deliberate thing uh -huh. um, because it wasn't the case that they all had the same fingernail, you know, Broadway mm. only. But at the same time, I mean, I personally, I mean, I, I'm sure people will think I'm silly for even staying after one mark that was found, but I personally didn't feel that it could actually be used. Uh, it was more the attempt that I noted I, I, I don't see how he could have seen it. I have my hands over my cards anyway while I play with my left hand. And uh, everyone else's, they would pull them back. They were right at the sort of at the edge of the felt anyway. And I think it would have been very difficult to see. But at the same time, uh, the guy was wearing glasses. I suppose it's always possible in a high-tech world that if people care enough, there might be some kind of UV, et cetera. Well, so somebody in the live chat, Derek says, the shuffle machine will mark occasionally, but the machine usually does it on both sides. Floor should check the whole deck and see which cards and if the marks are identical. And that comes from Derek, a former Aria dealer. By the way, Derek, if this is the yeah. Derek that I'm thinking of, Derek, I have been searching literally for months for the hand against that you played against Postle where he had aces and folded. So let me know where that hand is. Because, I'm again, I'm putting together, I think, my compilation of Postle hands at some point. Because uh, I think it needs to be re revisited. But I'm pretty sure that Derek has this hand that hasn't really come out. It was on a Joey Ingram stream, but it's sort of buried in one of the videos. And it's like one of the most egregious hands that haven't come out. But anyway, so, yeah, it's like the other thing, too, that you have to understand is, is that sometimes people are squeezing the cards in a certain way. I mean, obviously, it wouldn't make sense that it would just be Broadway cards that would be squeezed. But mm -hmm. I think sometimes I've been guilty of, because the way that I squeeze like an Omaha of sort of bending the cards unintentionally, um, but just in the way that I hold the cards, do, what, I mean, I, I think that you're calling in asking about like what the casino response should have been, right? Yeah, that's right. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't, I, that doesn't seem like, unless they get it a lot, I, I don't know. Um, were you the only one that walked away from the table? Um, no, no. So um, the, two others, two others left when I did, and someone had left before, so the game was quite small by the time I left. Yeah, I mean that doesn't seem like it's a good solution for the floor, especially if the dealer is confirming, "Hey, this guy's coming in." Yeah, I mean, sure. I would just, I, you know, this is the Go thing ahead. with some of these situations. By the way, someone's uh, SS Theg says, "Bart, the company that supplied the WSOP a few years ago was Mondiano." They're cheaper and far less quality than Copac. Okay, my bad. Mondiano. Sorry, Copac. Um, so this is what I would do if I was the floor. I would take the guy aside and say, I'm not accusing you of anything, 
but my dealer is telling me that when you came into the game, that the cards are having a fingernail through them. So I want you to be aware that it's possible the way that you're squeezing the cards is somehow unintentionally marking the cards. Can you please be aware of the situation? Please stop marking the cards, even if it's unintentional, because if it continues and we continue to see evidence of fingernailing of the cards, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. That's a simple solution. It, 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 it's not, it doesn't yeah. escalate things, right? And, and who knows mm -hmm. if the guy, again, I, I really question if someone is gaining an advantage by fingernailing cards. I understand your point where it's like, even if he's not, he's trying to cheat, right? And they're not doing anything yeah, about exactly. it. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, Which I, I think is a, I mean, yeah, it's if, the Empire Casino in London. The Empire Casino, I've been there. I think they had the World Series of Poker. Is that, no, they had the World Series of Poker Europe in, is that the one in Leicester Square? They had the, yeah, it is. They had the Europe one there. Yeah, yeah, I did commentary back when James Board won, mm -hmm. the Englishman. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I remember. Yeah, 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 I mean, I would say, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, if you're not happy with the decision that, the floor makes that's, well, no, that's I, one I of also the... wondered if it might be a good a good uh, a good uh, good move to break the game and to see if it recurs and which table it recurs on i, I just and again yeah. like if you're a regular free, and then and then we'll wrap this call up but if you're a regular frequenter of that casino and you're in in this happened where you were so unhappy that you walked away and i don't think that that's unreasonable that you did that if you're going to go back there, I would talk to, you know, a supervisor or somebody above that guy and say, like, I don't listen like I, ha you know, well, you can be honest with them. If you have a good experience there for the most part, you said, you know, I just had this experience last night that gave me some trouble. Uh, I wasn't happy with the resolution. I want you I want to tell you what happened. You know, this particular floor guy, it was obvious that this guy was marking the cards, whether it was intentional or not intentional. And he didn't do anything about it. And, and it broke the game because of it. And then I'd be on the lookout to see if that guy came back in with the glasses too. You know? Yeah. And indeed. see what happened. Well, thank you for that. That's, uh, that's very handy. Thanks for your perspective. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, I appreciate the call. If you like what you've seen here, please hit the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this call in hand, hit the like button down below. To check out CrushLivePoker.com, click on the link in the description. Use the code YTA300 to get the first 30 days for free.